for me, so screw it. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw some, some cooking advice out here. I'm also gonna move the webcam temporarily. Let's, let's move the webcam temporarily. <sighs> Cause it's really hard to speak to all from up there. So, so, uh, some, some cooking, it's really confusing. Some cooking tips from the captain. First is the tips that I had from my special forces days. The seven Ps. The seven Ps. Prior preparation and prior planning and preparation prevent piss poor performance. Truth. Absolute truth. If you plan and do everything methodically and prepare before you start cooking, it's gonna be a lot more fun. It'd be less stressful, you won't forget things, and it'd be it'll be awesome. So that's the plan. We're gonna we're gonna do that. We're gonna gonna go through the whole preparation steps. Um, we're gonna make everything. We're gonna make the balls, <laughs> meaty balls, and then we're gonna uh, get with the cooking. And it's gonna taste glorious. I know because I've had them before. Questions? Uh, can we get a shout out for Matt and Matt? Good luck cooking. All hell, Felds. Hello, Matt and Matt. Good to see you both. How the devil are you? Um, do, 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 not this time? Okay, it's all good. Uh, now, if I had some stuff to cook with, I would cook. I just watch and learn. No, good, no, no worries, guys. I am going to highlight this. Where's the camera? I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to stick it up on my YouTube so you guys can do it later on. Um, but. No, Grog. Damn it. Grog. 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 Give me two seconds. Let me bring Grog, Grog up. Let me bring Grog up. I can't even read. Muzad, you're black on black on my screen. I can't even read you right now. Let me uh, open this. Sage. Um. Do, do, do. Just getting Grog up and running. Okay, Grog's up and running. <clears throat> Grog is ready. Um, you know I'm head chef. Are you? Send him to Dave Are you, Dog's Mr. Monkey? Locker. Are you? Then, then prepare to be schooled by a not head chef. Taboo, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome to the crew. Uh, yes. How's it going? It's going good. But anyway. Um, it's really annoying me that my chat's over here, but that's fine. Right, let me put you back on the aerial cam, and we're going to get started. We're going to pre do the pre-prep. There we go. Aerial cam. So, first things first, I need to check I have everything. Um, I have a bunch of stuff around. I'm going to run through. I'm going to do the check, make sure that we have everything. So, first things first, meatballs. You need meat. We have um, a fresh... 500 grams of beef um, from the local butcher, so that's good to go. And I have a big bowl which I'll need later. So first thing I'm gonna do is get this meat open, chuck it in the bowl, good to go. Mmm, fresh, fresh, fresh ground beef. Need a bin bag. But yeah, I didn't know you were a head chef, Mr. Monkey. That's awesome. Okay. So, I also have uh, something I find very useful. A bits bowl. So rather than have, trying to cart things over to a bin, I just have a bits bowl, so when I chop stuff, all the offshoots, I just chuck it in the bits bowl, and then chuck the whole bits bowl in the bin afterwards. So we have the beef, fresh, fresh, sexy beef. Um, you can use corn if you're a vegetarian, or some of the weird vegetarian stuff, but I prefer beef. I'll sit that over there. We also need the herbs for the for the meatballs. So for that we have rosemary, and we have um, dried oregano or oregano or whatever you need. And this has a little thing on because it's brand new, so I need to take this off real quick. Use some restaurants. That's cool, man. Gotta slap it. Slap the beef. 
Um, is this stream live? Please smash egg on head to confirm real. Sunday, Thomas. Uh, how about no? How about no? But yes, this is a live, live cooking stream. So we have the oregano and rosemary. Um, and we also need an egg. So we have uh, local farm eggs. Gonna need one of these, but I have those ready. Um, and I need the, the crackers, which I'm gonna use as a breadcrumb, but they work, I find they work a lot better than breadcrumbs. It's a Jamie Oliver thing. Um, so we have all the stuff on the meatballs. And then for the sauce, oh, also salt and pepper. And then for the sauce, we need an onion. We need a garlic. We need some basil. We need two tins of chopped tomatoes. And we need, oh, balsamic vinegar, which is awesome by Sainsbury's. Classy. Also, we need a Milo. Milo, come here. Always need a Milo. Get the biscuit. Um, have you expressed concern over limited cargo space in Freelancer? It's pretty awesome, man. How to basic. Yeah, this is super basic. This is, this is, the reason why I'm doing meatballs, this is the first thing I ever cooked, like, properly. I mean, I cooked stuff before with, like, jars of ragu and, and whatnot, but actually cooking from scratch with, like, herbs and shit, this is the first thing I ever cooked. Um, so yeah, so that's all the stuff we need for the sauce. So we have everything. Next thing we need is a chopping board. Um, this one has cool rubber things which stops it slipping. If not, another Jamie Oliver tip, you can get a, uh, a damp tea towel, put that on your tabletop, put the board on top, and it stops it slipping around. So definitely recommend that, because you don't want to chop a finger off. And I'm trying, going to try my hardest not to chop a finger off today. Um, and then we also need a knife, a nice sharp chef's kitchen knife. Um, and I'm going to be using a little grinder thing to make the crumb, but um, you can use actual breadcrumbs or you can use a hammer to smash them up or however, whatever is easiest for you to smash the things up. Get a better kitchen. What? Bake cookies? Uh, maybe government pet, maybe another time. Maybe another time. Send him to Davy Jones' locker. Hey, Ballistic93, thank you for the follow, buddy. Welcome, welcome to the crew. I'm looking shit now, all. Glad to have you aboard, matey. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is the noisy part. I'm gonna make the bread crummy thing. So I'm gonna take six of these. I got 12 in total. Uh, if you don't have these, they're in America or whatnot, um, like water crackers, or just use breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs is probably easier. So I'm going to break these up real quick, and what I'm going to do is mute the mic, because this is going to get loud. And Milo's already run away. Do, do, do. Actually, I'll break these up a bit first. There we go. Mm -mm -mm. Get on there. Get on there. Sweet. Okay, that plug's not working. Let me move the whiskey out of the way. And we'll try this other plug. Stupid plug. Oh, well, it looks like we're gonna go the hard way as well, because this is broken. Awesome. Excellent. So, plan B. Get me the clean tea towel. Put the things on the clean tea towel. Get the hammer. Hit it, sorry.
Hitting it's a lot more fun. Okay, so we got we got most of it. We just break up some of the bigger bits with our fingers. I have washed my hands first, just so you know. Always wash your hands before you start. Mm -mm -mm. Why is that Good job with the cooking show format. Well, thank you, man. Who was that? Why, why aren't you updating? Board Gamer, thank you so much for that $5, buddy. Thank you so much. I actually spent, I spent about two hours today cleaning my kitchen. <laughs> Just so you know, full disclosure, my kitchen was a mess. Okay, so we are almost there. Let me just give it another quick bash. Just beat it in hammer time. These are some good tunes to cook to. So we have made our crummy stuff. Uh, I'm gonna get another bowl real quick. I'm gonna chuck all this in the bowl. Sweet. Yeah. Cool, so now we've made this, this crummy stuff, which we're going to use to, uh, to help the meatballs stick together. Zarjar, hello! There ain't no mouse. There ain't no mouse. My, if, if there was a mouse, Milo would eat it. Like, immediately. Little fluffy things, he just loves to chase. Okay, uh, so we have the, the crumb ready. Next, we need the rosemary. Oh wait, we, we forgot. We forgot a critical step, guys. We forgot an absolutely critical step. Cheers, chaps. Okay, much better. Okay, let's get back to it. And I just chucked wine all over my chopping board. I did spilled. <laughs> Drink more. <laughs> Saved. Saved. Okay, so with the rosemary, you want to get fresh sprig rosemary. If you can get it off a bush, get it off a bush because it's free and it's. Just as awesome. Oh, smells. I wish. I wish this was this was smell o vision. It's glorious. So we need about um, four or five sprigs, about that size. So let's let's grab some of these. I'm gonna take this whole thing and a couple off here. Um, and it basically, once you finish chopping it up, it, it equates to around about a tablespoon full of. Um, of these. Now to take them off the stalk, you just grab it by the, the end and just brush against the grain of the stick and all the bits of rosemary fall off. And then you chuck the stalk in the bits, bo bits bowl. Again, take it by the end, not the root end, but the tip end, and then just pull your fingers over it and it strips the leaves straight off. And then just Tug off the tips and chuck the stalk. So just do that on all these. Put yourself a glass of wine, first time watching the cooking show ever. Well, welcome. Welcome to the galley, lads. <laughs> no scurvy tonight, boys. 
So they just uh, keep going until so you have a nice little pile of this rosemary malarkey. And afterwards, your fingers smell so glorious, like cooking this dish with fresh herbs and stuff. Herbs, if you're American. Uh, it just, your, your kitchen, your everything will smell amazing for like the rest of the day. Uh, a little bit more. Screw it. Okay, we're good. We have rosemary and all, all the off shoots in the bowl. This can go for another meal. It's great when cooked with a steak. Just chuck a sprig in the uh, pan with it. Um, chicken, obviously. Stick it in with some roast chicken. Actually, I might do that tomorrow. Roast chicken with rosemary. Or roast potatoes. Rosemary is good with everything. Absolutely everything. Dexian, it's all good, man. You haven't missed anything glorious. All we've done so far is put the meat in a bowl. We've um, turned the cream crackers into crumb stuff and pluck some rosemary. So it's all good, Dexian. It's all good. Um, not a drug user, but that marijuana he's putting in his meatballs. <laughs> It's herbs, if you're American, whether or not I decide to agree with the H. This is very true. So, now chopping. Chopping of herbs. There's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, there's the safer way, and then there's the chefy way. Um, and you can get these like rocking blades. The safest way is you get all the herbs, put the tip of the blade on the chopping board, and just down and through them. With a, a slight forward pressure, you just chop through them and keep going, keeping your fingers well, well out the way. And as you go a bit faster, you just chop through, pull it together, more choppy. And when you get when you get practice with it, you just chop through real quick until it's nice and finely chopped up. And I know you could go to the shop and you could buy like pre-chopped dried rosemary, but it would not be this awesome. It would no way near be this. This awesome smells so good, fresh. Oh, and also where I'm holding the blade, I'm holding it so that my my three fingers around it, and I'm supporting the blade on both sides with my thumb and finger, well away from the actual blade part, but it allows me to make sure that the blade doesn't roll over while I'm chopping. So there we have it. Some nice, freshly chopped rosemary, good to go. So I'm gonna get a little, little plate here. Stick all this glorious rosemary. This almighty rosemary, as, as Bob Ross would say. To this plate, get rid of the big bit, and that's the uh, the rosemary ready to go. Skill with a cutlass, indeed. Well, thank you, board gamer. Thank you very much. Um, so the other thing we need, we need a tablespoon of oregano. So I got my little uh, little measuring spoons here. The biggest one, the one tablespoon, big one. Just gonna fill this up. A nice, nice pile of uh, oregano in there. We'll stick that in with the rosemary. So there we have our, our herbs, rosemary and oregano, ready to go. That can go away. Oh, so the, I, I started I started saying some tips about cooking. The first one is um, preparation, which is why I'm doing all of the prep before I even start cooking. The second thing is clean as you go along. If you don't. You've got a horrible, horrible mess and pile of crap to clean up afterwards, and you're like, you've just had a glorious meal, and then you've got to clean up, and it's shit. So definitely clean as you go, put stuff away as you've used it, like this. Should go in the fridge, but I can't open the fridge because the door is blocking the fridge. But 
that's all ready. We have the herbs. Um, what else we need? So we have everything ready to make the meatballs, um, which we'll start in a bit. But I also, let me just get the rest of the oregano on there. Next thing we need to do is get everything ready for the sauce. Um, I mean, we could make the meatballs now, but I'm doing the whole prep first. So next thing we're gonna do is chop an onion. It's not difficult to do. Um, some people make a whole meal out of it, but it's, it's basically just, it's pretty easy. You take the onion, you chop it in half. Watching your fingers, and you're going right through the, the top and the bottom of the onion. So you have two halves of onion. As you see, I've gone from the tip to the butt of the onion. And then you peel off the outer brown skins. Now some like to keep the brown skin so you can hold it, but I, I don't like doing that, I just pull it off. So you got one half onion, and this is where I start crying, guys. This is where I start crying. Always keeping stuff clean, Walter White. <laughs> hey, Walton Brett, how you doing, buddy? Welcome to the stream. Okay, so we have two halves of onion. Next, you take the first half, take the knife, chop off the end. Let's do that in your bits bowl. Then, this part is kind of optional. Um, you, you take the knife and you go about halfway. If I had the knife can, I'd be able to show you a bit better. But you go about halfway down, and with the knife level, holding it from the top, so you don't chop your fingers, just slice almost all the way through. So we're through to there. So almost all the way through, but not quite. Then, you're chopping down. Again, you don't want to go all the way to the end. Just chop down. And this will give you a nice, fine dice. And it all stay together. So you have it, so it's chopped. I don't know if you can see. But it's sliced down the way and through the way. And then finally, just down the same as you did before. And with your fingers on your other hand, you want to kind of make a little claw. So as you are moving and chopping down the onion, you are moving your fingernails so you're keeping everything out of the way. And then the knife, it's hard to do without my knife cam, but the knife basically butts up against your knuckles. So you, there's no chance of you actually chopping through your finger. Send him to Davy Jones. Then with this last bit, you can just kind of chop around, waste not, want not. Take some last bits of onion off. Then I use the little stump of the onion just to brush the onion off the blade and throw that away. And that gives us a really, really nice, finely diced onion. Finely diced onion. Uh, if you want a coarser dice, you just chop further apart. It's pretty easy. Can I mess you? I, you've really got my address, haven't you? But yeah, I'll send you a message with it, buddy. I'll send. Oh, these, the jeans are clean, man. The jeans are clean. Shit your face. Also, someone followed. Who followed? Mr. Philoso. Thank you for the follow, buddy. Welcome. Welcome to the crew. The good chip narwhal. Okay, so that's one onion done. Do the other one real quick. That's why it's critical to have a really sharp knife. If you had a, a, a blunt knife, it'd be wobbling around all over the place and you'd end up causing a hell of a mess. Chopping off fingers, doing bad things. I also clean the, the, the whole surface, so these bits falling off, don't care. Come back here. So yeah, so we have awesome chopped up onions. All of these are going to go into a bowl, ready for later. Ah! Oh. Oh, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. It's all good. So there's our onions. Done. Now, let's
to clear up this mess. Oh, the, the tears are real, guys. The tears are real. Oh. Mm. What dish would we recommend for impressing the ladies? This dish, man. This dish has gotten me much booty over the years. Much, much glorious booty. Because um, everyone likes it, unless they're vegetarian. Because it's pasta, it's meat, it's glorious tomato sauce. It's pretty easy to make. You make it in advance, so when it comes to cooking it, you just literally just throw it on the hob. Do the sauce, done. Um, so you're not, not wasting your time cooking while they're doing whatever in the living room. You can just, psh, done. So yeah, I, this is the dish. This is the dish. If you want to go slightly fancier, one of the dishes I'm going to do in the future uh, episode of this is a crispy parma chicken, and it is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Oh. Pizza. Pizza! Nah, not really. Okay, so, where are we at? Uh, so we have the onions. We need garlic. So garlic is a fiddly one. Get a couple of cloves of garlic off here. As, mu as much garlic as you like, really. If you like garlic, do loads of cloves. If you don't like garlic, do less. It's uh, completely up to you with the garlic. Although, if it is to woo a lady, you may want to go slightly less garlic, just in case she doesn't eat as much. But yeah, so we get the cloves of garlic. Get rid of all these crappy bits. And for these, there's a couple of ways you can get the skins off. And uh, the first one is the picky way. So you chop off the, the rough end. So on one end of the garlic is the rough end. You chop off the rough end, and then you just kind of pick it around so that you can peel off the skin and peel it around and then you have the, the garlic the other way you gotta be careful not to hurt yourself doing this way you basically, it to loosen the skin put the flat of the blade on give it a little squish and then the skin basically just falls off but be careful when you do that Careful about the sharp edge of the blade. Don't like, oh, chop the hand off. That's silly. Um, there's also a gadget you can get. It's like a little rubber tube. You put the garlic in and you roll it. And that's the other way as well. You can roll it between your hands. And then it does the same thing. It just breaks the skin off. And the skin just falls away. But then you have really garlicky hands. So not recommended. Send him to Davy Jones. Not Rock. even at all. Z33 Emperor, thank you for the follow, buddy. Welcome. Welcome to the crew with a good ship. Now, well, glad to have you aboard, matey. Welcome to the galley. Uh, this one's failing, so. Squish. Done. Easy. Garlic. <laughs> Just hope you date really likes garlic, right? Right? Could you add chili? Um, Omega, you could. I would add the chili to the sauce, not the meatballs. Um, I mean, you can add it to the meatballs as well, but like, you can add uh, bacon to the meatballs. You can, once you know what flavors you like, you can do all sorts. But I would recommend making it like standard first, and then seeing what it tastes like, and then start adding things. Also, potato has started growing some hair. Uh, 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 let's just check something. Excellent. Okay. Okay, so we have the garlic. Now we need to chop the garlic. The garlic is even more fiddly. So it's the same as we did with the onion. We're going to slice it. And again, we want to be careful to kind of hock our fingers so that we're, we're the blade's touching our knuckles. So there's no way you can chop through any finger. And then just chop it finely. When you get to the last little bit, just turn a little bit over and chop it again. Don't keep chopping until the end. And once you have it sliced, the same as the herbs. And you end up with nice diced up garlic. Put that over there out of the way. Do the next one. Mm -mm -mm. 
All these beautiful aromas happening right now. All the beautiful aromas. Salvador's beard! Salvador's beard! Haven't seen you in ages! Welcome back to the stream, buddy. How are you doing today? Last time I saw you, we were playing Borderlands. Two, in fact. Okay, so we got the garlic. All chopped up, ready to go. So yeah, some nice, finely diced. Careful when you're scraping the stuff off the knife. Nice, finely diced garlic. Ready to go. We're going to stick that on this little plate. I've got a bit of uh, bit of skin in here. Let's get rid of all the skin. Don't want the skanky garlic skin. Cool. So we have that. What are we missing? We are missing fresh basil. Again, this stuff smells amazing. Let me just wash my hands. Garlicky off there. So the basil. This this is the real deal. Like if, if everything else you get is dried, get fresh basil. I can't even I, I can't explain to you how orgasmic this shit smells. It's amazing. Uh, I'm now a proud owner. Wear up a freshly laundered purple novel shirt. Congratulations, Bequiffy! I want you to tweet at me a picture. I wanna see. I wanna see the narwhal t-shirt. Uh, it actually does, yeah, Mega, because uh, cause it, it flattens it a bit, but yes, and breaks up the, the stuff. But what we're going to do with this is pull off the little leaves. All the little leaves. And I, I had to leave as little stock on them as possible. And what you can do, if you're being fancy, if you're being like, if you're like doing it for a date or whatever, what you can do is where you have the very tip, you take that little tip bit off like that, and you get this little little mini lease. And then at the end, you just plunk that right in the middle of the uh, the meatballs, and it it looks really really fancy. So keep all of those for that. Send him to Davy Jones' locker. Hey, thank you to Falka Follow. G. Giang. Gianji. Gianji? <laughs> Gianji. Thank you to Follow. Welcome to the Send crew. To David George. The Good Shit Narwhal. And Edel. Edel Salami. Also welcome. Good to see you, buddy. Edel Salami. Right. Get more of these. More. More of these leaves. Don't miss these leaves. Another one of those little flowery things. It's not really a flower, but you get what I mean. More big leaves. Now, some people like to chop these. Little flowery things. Um, some people like to just roughly chop these up. I prefer to just rip them. So you, you just before you use them, just before you just rip. Rip, rip, it breaks, um, it breaks the cells in the leaves, lets out all that awesome aroma, and, and it, it's just glorious. So, there we have it. We have all things prepared, I think. I think we do. So, uh, herbs can go away, garlic can go away, and we're done. That's it. We are prepared. We are prepared for the cooking. Um, so, I'm going to clean off the knife. That can go home because that isn't needed anymore. Chopping board. Because we won't need the big board anymore. Oh, the little board anymore, sorry. That's 
stuff. Milo, shut your face. We're cooking right now. Cool, so we're all clean and set. Um, I'm gonna bring out the big board now. We'll need this in a bit. There you go, big chopping board. Now it's time to make some delicious, delicious meaty balls. So, so, drink. Preparation is key. Question Kathy, still doing the witch tomorrow? I am indeed, Sniper. I am doing Witcher tomorrow, as per usual. Is this the Bob Ross for cooking? <laughs> Happy little beef. I don't know if I can be Bob Ross it. See, so you click it, play Star Citizen, get Italian kitchen. My thing does say, my, my, it does say um, creative, doesn't it, on my screen? Does it say that? Do the meatballs come in LTI? No. I always say don't rinse the soap off in GB. Why would you rinse the soap off? It's a waste, waste of water. Tramuda, hey, good to see you. Right, so we have the meat. The meat is good, the meat is fresh, like proper fresh. Now into the meat, we take our rosemary, our oregano, and we just drop that right in there. And then get, get a couple of pinches of the oregano, There we go, herbs. We need some black pepper. So a good liberal twist of black pepper. Uh, I will you to this, P107, I certainly will. Hippolito, thank you for the host, buddy. Um, and we get some sea salt. Rock salt will do if you can get sea salt. It's very different to your normal salt. I definitely recommend if you want to cook and you want it to taste glorious, get sea salt. Definitely get sea salt. So, a good twist of sea salt. Okay. And then we need the crumb. So this goes in as well. Now I don't put it all in straight away because you'll feel if um, if your mixture is wet or dry enough once you start mixing it. And finally. Kosher salt, yeah, kosher salt works too. Get your egg. In. Done. Now, now is the fun part. Now, oh. Let me just uh, take my watch off. Hey, Katik. How you doing, buddy? And Tremuda, thank you for the host. Now you just get in there. Let's get in there, mix everything around together. Just give it a right good squidge, get the egg through it all so it should feel a little bit sloppy when you get started. And like when you do it, like get it and squeeze it through your fingers. Just really squeeze it, which is going to get the herbs completely incorporated into it. Get in there with both hands. Now I can feel this is, this is still very wet. So all I do is I add another handful of the crumb bit more crumb and go again and keep going until it feels so it, it's moist but it's not slippery moist it's just kind of nice moist nice moist you get it really well incorporated um, ideally I would have spent longer on the uh, making the crumb because there's some pretty big bits of crumb in here but it doesn't matter for the sake of demonstration and it should bind together into a awesome ball. Get a bit more of this on there. Still a little bit moist. Still a little bit moist. Give it a punch. Give it a squidge. And I think it's done. Yep, that feels about right. A little bit, a little bit tacky. Still moist, and we have one glorious meatball. Put this in the sink. 
give it a little rinse. Now I'm drying off the soap, but what I will do now is wet my hands in some fresh water. This is important because it stops your hands sticking to the balls when you're, when you're kneading them. So when you're kneading the balls, have moist hands or they'll stick. How many do we need? So the amount really depends on how many people you're serving, how big you want your balls to be. Um, what I do basically is I make it into a ball and then about halfway I split it. So I end up with two balls. And I try and try and make sure they're about equal size. They look about equal size. Um, so let's say I'm serving four. So what I'm going to do is split this ball again. And then split this ball. So you end up with four balls about the same size that smell amazing, like this smells amazing. Hey Tekko, I'm glad you're having fun buddy. <laughs> uh, when do you start cooking show? This is the first one Fury, this is the first one. So we have four balls, these are our four portions. Now for each ball, um, if you're doing for four, it's probably three balls about the best, so you take off, you split it into three, three lumps, pretty much. And then you get it. If it starts getting tacky, all you gotta do is a little bit more water. Moisten the hands. Put the ball in your palm, cup over the top, and just roll it around. Give it a squeeze if it's breaking apart, and roll it around. Squeeze, roll, and you end up with a perfect little round meatball. Ta da! Do the same with the other one. Make sure it's not breaking the part. And the third, this one's a little bit bigger, so I'll take a bit off, stick it on this. <laughs> Cover the balls, please, no squeeze. <laughs> When's the time to basil? That's um, in the sauce. Zajar, that's in the sauce. So we have one, two, three balls, first portion. Break this off into three. And you could make four if you want tiny balls. Um, or you can make two if you want massive balls. It's, it's, if you want two massive balls, that's okay. You're allowed two massive balls. It's, it's your food, you're cooking it. It's gonna taste great either way. Right, let's break them apart a little bit. Because my bits of, uh, bits of cracker are too big. This is quite a big one, so it'll steal some of that meat. So we throw it, well thank you, P17. Gonna buy a console for the family for eczema. I, uh, my recommendation critique is PS4 or every day of the week. And if it's for the family, there's a lot more stuff you can do together as a family. Get the, um, the rabbits um, and interactive TV show thing. And you'll have a whale of a time. And then you just keep going until you've made all your balls. Just break it into three chunks, roll it up. Is there no mod here to make quotes? That's hilarious. This one's a little bit bigger, so we'll steal some meat. I just want to try and make them as even as possible size, not just because it's fairer when you dole them out, but also because mm -mm -mm, they'll cook in the same amount of time, which is kind of important when you get to the cooking stage. Well, I miss <laughs> hey underscore. Um, lots of cupping of the balls and a little bit of squeezing. Last bit, last ball. A 
And so, like I said earlier, like the, all this preparation I'm doing now, you can do well before you actually cook the stuff. Um, you basically do this. You get to the stage where you have all the balls ready to go. Roll it so it, it so you get your nice nice round balls. Everyone likes nice round balls. <laughs> It's about someone for Star Wars spoilers. Ah, screw those guys. Shwilly balls. And if you get to the end and you notice that one ball is slightly smaller than the other balls, um, you can just steal a bit of meat and make that ball bigger. Oh, these balls smell so nice. Okay, that's going to be a quote. Damn it! So yeah, so there we go. We have all the balls. Now, if you want to um, store them, I'll actually do this for you right now, so you can see. All you gotta do is get your big bowl. Let me dry this off. You put your balls in the bowl. or whatever container you want to put them in is fine. So you put your balls in the bowl, balls are in the bowl, um, you get some extra virgin olive oil and you just drizzle it over the top. Drizzle some olive oil over the top and then you toss your balls. Just roll them around, give them a toss so they get nicely coated in the olive oil so you have nicely oily balls and then just stick that in the fridge, cover it, stick it in the fridge and then when you're ready to cook you just pull your balls out and you, uh, you stick them in the pan and you're good to go. Would you have case storing them in the sack? <laughs> Do I, I, I always oil my balls. It, it, it helps, it helps when you come to, uh, to preparing them. The balls do smell so nice. Right, so we have made our balls. Clean up part, we uh, get rid of all the crap that we haven't used. That's all done. That's cleaned. We can empty this now in my bin. Give this a little swish. And then we are pretty much good to go. Pretty much good to go. Um, balls done. Now it's just Send the sauce. Send him to Davy Jones' locker. Dokies, dockies, thank you for the follow, buddy. Welcome. Welcome to the crew with a good chip now. Let's have you aboard, matey. So I have my chopped, chopped tomatoes. I'll need those. I'll need my balsamic. I'll need my onions. And my garlic and my basil. Don't need the eggs anymore. We need some more wine. And we're going to move to cooking mode. So, if I remove this, get over here. There we go, we are ready to cook. So I'm going to take all this stuff. I'm going to take it over here. And, oh look, more wine. <laughs> okay, that's the last of that. Let me just uh, tilt this up a little bit. Is that good? I think that's good. Right, so we're ready to cook. And I'm going to move the microphone out a little bit so you guys can still hear me. We are ready to cook. I'll move this over here too. Now the power's all lying around. <laughs> yeah, no, so the guys didn't believe me. Anyone who didn't believe me, I, I did set fire to my oven gloves the other day. It was, it was, it was not my, my shining moment. It was not a shining moment at all.
<laughs> Safety first. Right, for this, first thing we need is a pan for the pasta. I forgot to get that out. We have spaghetti. Um, so we need a pan of water onto the boil for that. I'm going to use a small pan because there's only me. Um, if you need a bigger pan, just get a bigger pan. So we're going to get some water in this. Put that on. I'm going to turn that on right away because it's going to take a little bit to, to boil up. So we stick that on. Put it on a high heat. Um, I'm going to add some salt. What the salt does with pasta it counteracts the starch um, and stops it all kind of sticking together and also makes it taste glorious. So you put in some sea salt. You won't eat that salt, it would just infuse some flavour into the pasta. Um, and then I do a little mm, new oil, a little drizzle of olive oil. And what that will do when it when, when it um, when it gets up to boiling point. Um, the oil is going to kind of dissipate over the top of the um, the water, and as they put the pasta in, it's going to coat the pasta, and that's going to stop the pasta sticking even more. So that's cool. Now the next things I need, I need a um, hold up. Let me just catch you with chat. The only time I use high heat is to boil water. Indeed, work. Next thing I need, I need a small pan which I'm going to use to um, cook up the meatballs and then I need my big deep pan so it's a big pan nice deep sides and that's what the sauce is going to cook in so both these go on they turn up so um, the sauce starts off at medium high heat and the meatballs uh, because it's a small hob it's on a higher heat but these are both on a little drizzle of olive oil and a tiny little drizzle of olive oil in there. Don't need much in the meatball pan because my balls are already oiled. Um, so don't need excess oil in the oily pan. And then we take a, a drink. Cheers! Where's my balls? There's my balls. <clears throat> now I'm going to start out. This should heat up pretty quick. Start out with, um, in the big pan, we take the onion and we drop it in. And then in the little pan, we start putting our balls. If, if they got a bit misshapen from sitting, send him to Davy Jones' a locker. Blob0259, thank you for the follow, buddy. Welcome. Welcome to the crew. Send him to Davy Jones' locker. Uh, Jonte6879 also, welcome. So all of the balls are in the pan now. Clean our bowl real quick. So things you go along, you won't have to clean at the end, which is epic. And then get a little wooden spoon. And uh, you can use a spatula or something, I like a wooden spoon at this point. And just move that onion around. What you're trying to do is just soften the onions. Don't want to, don't want to cook them too far. You just want to just start softening and just start going slightly translucent. Do, do. I need these in a second as well. So now that the, the onions are starting to cook, the meatballs likewise are starting to brown. Get the little tongs. So basically you're just browning off your balls, that's all you're doing. You're not cooking them, they cook in the sauce afterwards. You're just browning them off. So make sure you keep, keep rolling them around so that they're getting uh, heated on all sides. Okay, 
excellent. Now the onions are starting to soften up. So as soon as the onions start softening up, what we're going to do is chuck in the garlic. So I'm going to get the garlic, put that in. Now you're starting to build a base of flavour in here. You've got the onions, the garlic, and it, it's oh, it's so good. Now we're almost ready to use the basil. So like I said earlier, I'm going to start just ripping it up. So I take a chunk, rip it off, rip it off, rip it off, rip it off. Not too much, you don't, you don't want to pull paper stuff. You just want to like make the bits slightly smaller. There we go. We have roughly ripped up basil. Oh, 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 that smells so good. It doesn't matter these big pieces because it'll wilt down when it's in the sauce. So this is, this is starting to look pretty good. All the onions kind of gone a bit soft. Now, this is the part where if you like food, you will have an absolute food orgasm. All you do, dump in the basil into the pan and then just, just embrace the waft. The waft of awesome smell. Then we go. Oh, let me take the chopped tomatoes. One tin in. We'll turn down the heat a bit. Other tin in. Recycle your tins. And then we get the, uh, the balsamic vinegar. And we're going to use one tablespoon of balsamic for each tin or 400 grams of tomatoes. So just put in a Quick tablespoon, another tablespoon, done. Clean the widgets. And then just stir it and, and smell it because it's, it's glorious. Then I heat back up a little bit so it starts to simmer nicely. Um, we need to add some black pepper. Just a little bit to start with. Just a little bit to get started. And a little bit of salt. Again, just to get it started. You'll later on you'll taste and then you'll add more seasoning as needed. Oh, cooking. You see, you see, I am indeed cooking. Mix that in. And then we have the sauce. Just cutting down. Let's roll the balls around again. camera over here a little bit, you'll end up with a sauce that's, that's nice, bright, vibrant red if you're using good tomatoes. Got the basil in there, got the onion, got the garlic, got the balsamic, and it should smell glorious. You've got the balls, which are just starting to brown up. Make sure anything that's pink has touched the bottom of the pan just to seal the flavour in. Good. Roll that one over a little bit. So this should be on max heat because you're literally just searing the outside of the meat and then the water is coming up ready to boil. Oh. There we go. Oh, we're back. Oh, I'm not an onion type person. I would leave only a few in the sauce. If you chop it super finely, Lars McPhee, um, you won't taste the onion, you will not taste the onion. The onion isn't a strong flavour, it's a supporting flavour. So um, if you chop it finely, it will basically melt into the sauce and it just adds a flavour. It, it does not taste the same without onion, honestly. Just try it, trust me. Trust me. Have faith. 
in your cat. If you don't like onions, I don't personally don't like onions. Cooked in a sauce properly, amazing. Just chop it nice and fine. To present a little sampling of red wine. I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry. Now, this is starting to uh, starting to thicken, and tomato does that as you cook it. Starts to thicken up. So we'll turn the heat down a little bit. We will get a tea teaspoon, and we will taste the sauce. Now it will taste very, very sweet um, at the start, and it will thicken and it will richen up as it cooks. So be wary of over seasoning early because the flavour will change as it's cooking through. For me, I double dipped because it's my sauce, so we double dip. That's pretty spot on, actually. That is pretty spot on. Do a little bit more black pepper. The black pepper just adds a little bit, well, peppery edge to it. And just a smidgen of salt. And also chucking it all over the hob is half the fun. So now these are all browned up. What we're going to do is we're going to transfer them to the sauce. Just plunk them in there. If any of them have pink, parts, pink spots, just leave them in there for another couple of minutes. What we're just doing is going to transfer them into the sauce. And turn the sauce down to a low simmer now. If, I, if any of my exes are watching, I never double dipped when I cooked you this meal, man. I never double dipped. So all the, all the meatballs are in there now. We turn that hob off. Clean our tongs. Wait for that to cool down a bit before we clean it. And then just, just coat the balls in all the sauce. Just make sure they're nicely sauced up. If you ain't got balls on your sauce, if you ain't got sauce in your balls, um, you're doing it wrong. So you sauce up your balls, get them nicely covered in all this glorious tomato sauce. And then it should be on a medium to low heat. It should be just, just simmering away. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like right now. So it should be just, see it's just slightly bubbling away. All the balls are nicely coated. They're deep in the sauce. This one needs a little flip. And yes, I'm chucking it all over the hob. But uh, make sure the, the, the balls are nicely in the sauce and it's simmering away. And we're good to go. And now our water's boiling. This is the point, this is the point where we add the pasta. So the pasta basically takes around 12 to 15 minutes to cook, thereabouts. Um, and it should be cooked till it has a little bit of bite to it. So what that means is it's not crunchy. There's no crunch in the middle, but it still has some texture. When it goes soggy, it's been cooked too long. Um, and these meatballs now are gonna take about 12 to 15 minutes to finish cooking. So it works out perfectly. Now I have a uh, clever little gadget which helps me measure out pasta based on portions. But if you don't have that, just put out your spaghetti. Maybe I'll hit the double dip. <laughs> and there's no big giveaway today, magician. Not today. We just got our standard 20 follower giveaway. So for each person, you're looking at around about, around about this much pasta, which is uh, maybe a centimeter and a half across. If I compare this to my meatball thing, that is perfect. 
So about that much pasta. And then when you drop it in the in the, the water to get it to not stick together, grab it around the top and around the middle, twist so it's all spiral like, and then drop. And what it does is it spreads like that, uh, which stops it sticking together. And then as it starts to soften, it just draws itself into the pan. All, all clever like. And side note, I can't believe it did it right first time. Half the time I do that, it just chucks water everywhere and the pasta just falls on the floor. <laughs> What's the random paper towel roll on top of the cabinet? Uh, it's kitchen roll. It's, it's just your, your standard absorbent kitchen roll. You have that in America, don't you? Larger pan and put it all in. And just give it, with it, if it's a small pan, it doesn't quite fall in properly, so just give it a little bit of helping hand. Now, you're gonna make sure you keep on moving this sauce around, so, otherwise so it doesn't stick or burn on the bottom of the pan. And roll the balls over as well, so they cook thoroughly through on all sides. Just give them a good roll. Oh, guys, oh! Oh, this smells so good. I, I pity you for not being here to be able to sample my balls. Because my balls would literally make your eyes water. Right, this is cooked down a bit. Now we get to taste again. Always keep tasting all the way through. Oh, and that's starting to rich up perfectly. Oh, that, that's, that's actually, I, I'm not going to do anything else with that. That is mwah, perfect. <sighs> uh, the big giveaway, if you're talking about the Christmas giveaway, it's, gonna, it's, it's on Christmas Day. Christmas Day um, is the Christmas Day giveaway. The clue's in the name. Do you want the first on my face? So if I do something like this, I will do it wearing my horse mask. <laughs> Oh lols, McPhee. Oh lols. Right, while waiting this is to cook, we can clean up more stuff. Clean up the little plate. Clean up the bowl. Anything else? Oh, those are little flowers. I think we're good. And also, see that accent, bitch, water. Now, I didn't set a timer. You should probably set a timer when you put the pasta in for 12 minutes, then test the pasta. Send him to I'm just going by to I'm using the pasta to time the meatballs. So as soon as the pasta's ready, the meatballs will be ready. TDB30, thank you for the follow, buddy. Welcome. Welcome Send to the crew with a good shit. No, well, let's have you on board, matey. And Mr. Master G, or Master GL, even. Thank you for the follow. Welcome. Put these away. Here's a wipe. It's had balls on it. Always clean. If you've had meaty balls on your chopping board, always give it a good clean. And I actually got uh, antiseptic spray to make sure it's nice and clean. Okay, this is starting to really thicken up. You can tell when it's almost ready because You'll see when you draw through the sauce, it doesn't pull back in. This is starting to get really, really thick now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the balls, oh, keep the balls rolling around. And I'm gonna lower the heat down to a bare minimum. Now just to wait for the um, spaghetti to finish cooking. So this is, this is pretty much ready. We are pretty much ready with the balls. I 
I'm going to get a fork and I'm going to move the spaghetti around, making sure that's not sticking together. And then I'm going to pull out a strand. And you can tell, you don't even have to taste it, you can tell if you pull out the strand and the arch that comes over this fork is wide, it's still stiff. If it droops nicely, if it just droops right down, you know it's, it's getting really soft. So this, I can only really tell, if I hold that up, I can only really tell because of, wait, 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 because of how far it's arching away from the uh, fork, I can still tell that's pretty stiff. And it's actually very stiff. I could almost snap it, yeah, so it snaps. So that's got about another eight minutes or so. Ugh, crunchy spaghetti. Nasty. And we're gonna get out a a nice pasta bowl ready to go. Put these things in there. And now I'll show you I'll show you some once we're done, I'll show you some serving tips to have to make it look glorious on the plate. And then I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna eat it, and then I'm gonna come back later for more streaming of actual video games. But we're getting close. So while we're waiting for this to finish cooking, any questions from any of you on any of the stuff we've been doing so far? Always clean with dirty water in the UK. It's not dirty. Why do you on Christmas Day all the family stuff when they'll make it? Because because I'm trying to entice you all to join me for Christmas. I didn't say I'll do it tomorrow at all, magician. I said cooking was tomorrow. But yeah, any questions you have, feel free to ask. So this is where we chill out, we drink some wine, we, we bathe ourselves in the wonderful aromas that are happening. You also turn on the extraction fan because it's getting pretty steamy in here. Have my exes ever complained about my balls? Never. That's never happened, McShot. That has actually never happened. There have been zero ball complaints. In fact, they've all, to a lady, said they're the best balls they've ever had. The proof's in the pudding, boys. How many girls have you made their eyes water with your meaty balls? That'd be telling. A gentleman never tells. I'll keep the questions coming, guys. Ahoy, Dexinslayer. Ahoy, Poincat. Hi. How are you doing today? We clear bear. Ahoy. Good to see you. My balls are pudding. What? No. No, they're not. <laughs> guys. Guys. Oh, I'm getting all hot and sweaty in here because of all the, the ball talk. Milo. Come here. No biscuit. Come here. Come here. Come here. Gently. Gently. Good boy. What are you using to set up your camera? I'm bouncing on top of a door. I'm bouncing on top of a door right now. Do you prefer breadsticks, garlic bread, or are you one of those Atkins fellows? Um, so I am, I am actually um, on a paleo diet right now, so this pasta is my cheat meal for the week. Um, but I love, 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 love bread. Like, love bread so much, which is my downfall. Having a baker just around the corner is torture. I friggin' love bad bread, but I, I can't eat a lot. I'm also kind of gluten intolerant, so I can't eat a lot of bread. But, uh, of those, garlic bread would be my thing. Garlic bread. Garlic bread. Hi, more more camp playing well raised. Great stream. Well, thank you, magician. Okay, so this is looking. Gun. Make sure you keep the balls rolling. Keep rolling them over. Make sure they're all cut through. And the sauce is nice and thick.
Did he say that the giveaway was, and I missed it? Um, I'm talking about the, free, the the Christmas freelancer. We're doing the freelance on Christmas Day. Shush. Freelance on Christmas Day, guys. It's gonna be special. <laughs> Hello, fish. Yes, we're doing cooking stream. You're just at the end. It's all pretty much done now. We're just waiting for the uh, spaghetti to cook. Now, I have made my own pasta before. It's a lot of work for, for very little payoff. See, now the pasta is drooping nicely. Nice pasta droop, which tells me it's pretty much good to go. I'm get one of these strands. It's good, still got a bit of spring. Bit of bite. My name. It's okay. Here you go. My little spaghetti. So it's good to go. We are finished. So, turn off all the gas. Go, go. Turn off all the gas. I've got a little pan strainer. Um, if you've metal handle pans, Always use oven gloves, even if you have burnt them. This, these can move out of the way now. Sorry guys, I'm just going to squeeze those behind the monitor. There we go. So we're going to strain off all this water. Careful of the steam in your face. Don't burn yourself on the steam. And give it a shake so all the steam comes out, which gets rid of the last of the water. Now is the clever bit. That can go in the pan. Now you have the spaghetti all cooked in your pan. What you do is you keep the gimp. <laughs> That'd be telling. You take, you move the balls outside, and you get some of this sauce, this glorious sauce. You get a good spoonful of sauce, and you stick it in the spaghetti pan. You get plenty of sauce. So I have some sauce in the spaghetti right now. And then you just mix that through. What that does, it does two things does two things. First, it makes the spaghetti look awesome. It makes it makes it taste awesome. Because now you have tomato spaghetti. But also the sauce stops the starch from making the spaghetti stick back together again. So it doesn't get all sticky. It just stays nice and spaghetti like. So there we have now awesome awesome tomato -y spaghetti. So we take our bowl, move over here, our pan, move this out of the way. We get some tongs. Make sure these are nice and dry. So we cleaned them just before. There's a little bit blackout. They're not at all. And then you take the tongs, you get a good lump of spaghetti, put it over your plate, you lower it down, you spin the bowl as you lower it down. What that does, it creates a little knot of spaghetti in the middle. And you get some more. Do it again. And then you just kind of Dip it down. What that does, it builds up a nice little pile of spaghetti in the middle. So we have this beautiful little pile of spaghetti in the middle. So then get three bowls, or four if you're feeling hungry. Set them aside. You get some more sauce. 
which is going to be the, uh, the foundation for your balls. Stay on the middle, spread that around a little bit. When you get your balls, one, two, three, ah, ah, ah. So your balls are on. Maybe another little, uh, little bit of sauce in the middle. 